Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. And if you're following along, hopefully we can wash the taste of Problem 5 Part 3 out of our mouths with Problem 5 Part 4. Uh, so this one gives us two functions, h1 and h2. And we've got that h1 is an element of big O of h2. And we want to know if h1 factorial is an element of big O of h2 factorial. And then we're supposed to prove or disprove our answer. Um, so we know h1 is an element of big O of h2, so we know that there is a constant c and a constant n0, uh, such that for all n greater than or equal to n0, uh, h1 of n is less than or equal to c times h2 of n. And the question is whether there is some other constant, let's call it d, and some other constant, let's call it n1, so does there exist uh, d and n1 such that for all n greater than or equal to n1, h1 of n factorial is less than or equal to d times h2 of n factorial. So that's our question. Now, my first temptation here would be to say, oh yeah, absolutely, this is true, uh, because we've got this, this constant up here, and we can just reuse that constant down below. But, but the trouble is that we're multiplying h1 of n by h1 of n minus 1 by h1 of n minus 2, and so on and so forth, on the left down here. And we're multiplying h2 of n, h2 of n minus 1, h2 of n minus 2, and so on and so forth on the right over here. We can probably not worry about the, the low order terms, excuse me, not the low order terms, the, the small values of n. And it, it turns out you can actually redefine big O so you don't need this n not bound. Um, you just need the constant. So we probably can not worry about those terms. But we can't worry about the fact that we're multiplying more and more and more h's together uh, because we might, might need that constant to get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, as we go along. Uh, or, or, and that's going to be trouble. Constants aren't allowed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that kind of suggests to me that maybe this isn't true. So what I want to do is I want to find an h1 that is in big O of h2 and show that h1 factorial is not in big O of h2 factorial. So I'm going to reach for the very simplest uh, functions I can find. Um, things that come to mind are like n and 2n or n and n plus 1. Uh, so let's try things like that. Um, and we'd better flip them. Uh, because we want sort of the one that's going to end up being bigger when we factorialize it to be on the left. So I don't know. Let's uh, let's try this one. Let's try h1 of n is equal to n plus 1. h2 of n is equal to n. And it is the case here that h1 is in big O of h2. So this is going to be a good counterexample if it works out as a counterexample. So what is h1 of n factorial? What happens when we take the factorial of h1 of n? Well, h1 of n factorial is just n plus 1 factorial. And h2 of n factorial is just n factorial. Uh, how do n plus 1 factorial and n factorial compare asymptotically? I think we did this in class. It's a little counterintuitive. You look at these and you're like, ah, it's just a plus 1. That doesn't matter. But that turns out not to be true. And it's easy to see if we take the ratio of these things. What is n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial? Well, remember, n plus 1 factorial for sufficiently large n is just n plus 1 times n factorial. And these will just cancel. So this is just n plus 1. That ratio goes to infinity. If that ratio goes to infinity, then these are not big theta of each other. Instead, the top one dominates. So the n plus 1 factorial one dominates. And that's the one we said was h1. So h2 is little o in this case. h2 of n is little o of h1 of n. And that means h1 of n is not an element of big O of h2 of n. 
So that's it. That's our counterexample. Um, we can probably do the same thing with 2n and n. I think that'll work as well. Uh, in fact, I think looking at this more carefully, uh, almost any function that is, uh, any two functions that are kind of theta of each other, but one of them is appreciably larger than the other one, when we apply that factorial to it, we're going to make it grow faster. Uh, so I think we're going to find in most cases, um, this is this is actually not true. So this is false. And our counterexample is this one down here. Next, we'll work on problem six.